Hey everyone, uh, welcome to another episode of Everything OneNote. Today I'm going to show you um, something called Immersive Reader. Okay, so what I've done here is in my OneNote, I've taken a few lines here from a popular children's book called Don't Let the Pigeon Drive the Bus, and I've written them into my, into my OneNote space. Okay. What I'm going to do is I'm going to open this up um, in a piece of software called Immersive Reader, which is built into OneNote. Um, the only thing I kind of like to say to everyone to keep in mind is that it can look different depending on kind of what version you're using, um, what device you possibly are using it on, or if you're crossing, um, like if you're going across different um, Microsoft products. So what I mean by that is that um, it can function slightly different in the Word version of Immersive Reader to what it does in the OneNote version on the desktop and also on an iPad, it functions and looks completely different as well. So just keep that in mind that everything I show you today may not be possible if you kind of open this up and try to repeat the same thing on an iPad. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to, from the top here, I'm going to click over to view. So here in view, I can have this option from the second from the left to turn on Immersive Reader. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to click here on Immersive Reader and it's going to take that text and place it into this Immersive Reader space. Now, first things we'll notice here is that text comes through. All of our kind of OneNote features have disappeared. Okay, so we're just focusing on the text. And what we have down the bottom here is these options to play and read the text aloud. So you do have some settings here, so you can control the speed of the voice and you can change the gender of the voice as well. So if I kind of click play. Don't let the pigeon drive the bus by Mo Willems. So you kind of get the idea, the background kind of dulls or goes a bit darker and then it kind of jumps and highlights the words as it's reading them. Um, the cool thing about this is that there are a lot more options than just basically read aloud. So if I look at the top right hand corner here, I'm going to click here on text preferences. Now here I can control the size of the text that I may need to read. Um, I can increase the spacings of the words if I like, and there are three fonts there to choose from. The other thing here is themes. I can choose a themed background as well and that will place that behind and remove the standard white background. The next one along, so the one in the middle, we have some grammar options. So here we have a syllable, so I can click and it will break up the words. And essentially here, if you look at the word pigeon in the middle of the screen at the top, it's just kind of placed a dot in between um, where the syllable breaks the words apart. Okay, so we can see um, that, which is pretty helpful. Um, phrases there, I don't tend to really use phrases. Being in Australia, I've found that using this doesn't really suit how phrases are used um, in Oz, but it might be suitable for you. So have a look at that one. The other really cool one here is which I like is called parts of speech. So you can set a color first. And when I do that and turn it on, you can see that all the nouns that are in the text turn the color purple. So I can do the same with my verbs, my adjectives, and my adverbs, um, and they all light up so I can see them. You can also choose to have the labels on, so it just kind of puts an N above for noun, um, but you have to have the color on at the same time. You can't just have the labels. Okay, So you can kind of switch them all back if you're just focusing maybe on a lesson around nouns, or the students want to check that they've you use a certain number of nouns, they could bring it into a immersive reader and check their work. The last section here on the right is reading preferences. So if we're using it for reading, we can turn on line focus here and you can see how I've got it. the first one is defaulted to one line at a time. I can open that up and see three lines at a time. And if I just close that for a second, you can see that when I click down that it just moves through the lines and kind of focuses on, on the reading space, which is great. We also have picture dictionary. I already have picture dictionary turned on. What that means is that if I click on a word, let's say like bus, it's going to just put up a picture of a bus for us. Okay, pigeon, I'm going to hope. Yep, wonderful. What you may find is that some words, though, don't have um, 
like pictures attached to them. Okay. Um, and my experience with immersive reader is that if it's missing and you feel like it should be there, um, they're, they're pretty well with this one. Um, if it should be there, it's just kind of a matter of time until it pops up. Um, the last thing here, we have this translation option. Okay. So you can select or go through the different types of languages that are made available. I can click that on. And what that will do is if I click on an ind individual word like bus, it's also going to translate that word and I've chosen Japanese. I can also click here. Bus. And well, maybe that wasn't a great example, was it? Um, so, you know, drive. Okay. And it will say that word for me in that language. And I can also switch that on so it's on for the whole document. Let me just turn line focus off. So it will translate the whole document. So when I play that, it will read it for me. Once you've got it on and whole document view, you can kind of flick back to original. So I'm up the top in the middle there and I can kind of switch between the two at the same time. Other last thing before we go is it remembers your settings. So if you're on the same device, you're using the same thing. Once I leave Immersive Reader and I reopen it again, it will remember, it will remember that I like my, my text this size, that I like having this blue background, that I you know tend to have the nouns on. So you don't have to keep um, adjusting or making those settings every time. Anyway, guys, I hope you found that helpful and we'll see you again soon. Cheers.